actually. We've got Dave up in Connecticut, it sounds like. Uh, you're asking about when historical fiction was developed? I, I'm not sure. What's what's your question, Dave? Yeah, so um, I don't know if it was this show or a previous show I was watching, but um, you kind of brought up the, well, the concept of uh, different books like The Hobbit and how it might relate to um, the Bible, how there's consistency internally. Mm-hmm. Uh, so my question is that, well, actually, what would your position be that the Bible is basically a fiction that has history kind of entwined in it? Yeah. Or that it's just, comp- okay, so that's kind yeah. of the concept. Yeah, yeah, so, so, so how yeah. Much- Hey, yep. Hang on, real quick, real quick, Dave, because I, I think I, I I think I'm following along with you. You're you're kind of asking like, is, are there parts of the Bible that are like actually historical, and are there parts of it that like are fiction? Was this something that was written from the beginning as like a purposeful, you know, fairy tale type thing, or was this something where people were trying to actually, you know, explain what's going on and stuff? So like, yeah, there there's undeniably a lot of history in the Bible, right? Um, I, I okay. think it's ridiculous yep. when somebody who's, you know, on my side of the aisle, the non-religious side, right, says like, oh, there's no history. That That's very silly. Uh, the good news is I, I don't tend to actually hear too many like atheists, agnostics and so forth that say that. Um, what I do tend yep. to hear, though, is on the other side, on the believer, the, the believer's side, the Christian side, I tend to hear people make yep. the claim more of like the Bible is the most historically accurate book that's ever been written by man, um, or the Bible is the most historically accurate book that society has, or so on and so forth. Yep. Um, the the yep. things that I find that are historical in the Bible are m- the vast majority of the time very trivial. Um, and the times where they're more important, it seems to me they're they're wrong. Um, and so that's okay. that's where I have a problem with it. Now, with that being said, just to finish off the the little bit of nuance here, and then I'll, I'll give it back to you, Dave. Um, I don't necessarily though believe that the Bible was written in this like historical fiction context. And the reason I say that okay. is because, that doesn't really seem to be the focus of the aspects of the Bible that are more biographical, right? That that those areas of the Bible, individuals were seemingly, at least, you know, I, I'm going to try to be as charitable as possible. They were seemingly trying to, mm-hmm. as accurately as they could, describe the events that they had witnessed or participated in or heard about or whatever. Um, but that doesn't okay. mean that they aren't mistaken, right? I don't necessarily believe, you know, it's like purposeful lies, although there are books of the Bible that are attributed to letters of Paul that we know for a fact Paul did not write, you know, so it's like maybe that person was trying to be a little bit more devious with it, but like other people, like not so much. So I I, I just don't think it's this one cut and dry, the whole freaking Bible goes into one category of junk or like perfect history, you know, I, I think it's more nuanced right. than that. And it's worth knowing that. So I'll shut up for a second. Okay. Uh, what, what you got from, from all of that, Dave? Yeah, no, I, I definitely, you know, like that more nuanced approach. Um, so the, so one of the biggest questions, right. depends on whether the re- resurrection is historically accurate. Of yeah. course, and that's probably something that you hear all the time. So, with that kind of question, um, what what would that be? Something that was embellished in your? I'm just trying to understand more your view, and then maybe talk about it more. Sure. Um, so, is that something that's embellished, like an sure. embellished concept? There was a man, and it became embellished, or would that be? Um, yeah. I, I'm gonna let I'm gonna yeah, let uh, cross examiner yeah. answer sure. first, but real quick, I want to know, Dave, um, do do you think yeah. like Jesus, yeah. like for real, for real, tangibly, person crucified on the cross, dead for three days, rose again? Do do you believe that? Because that, that's always really important for us. You know, we want to know what what our callers believe and and kind of how they got to that. So before we answer and give yeah. our thoughts on it, do you believe that that is true? That is a historical fact. Um, yeah. 
Oh, okay. Can I ask a quick question? Would that change how you view me as a person? Just no. it would be just no, not not thing, for me. Right? I'm I'm not I'm not going to speak for cross examiner, but I I would not at all. I would yeah I would wager a bet that okay. no, it's not going to change at all. But this this show okay. really is kind of focused yeah. on believers calling in and saying like, hey, here's kind of the stuff that I believe and why I believe it. I think uh, when we yeah. kind of get our understanding, we'll kind of give some reasons as to why we do or don't accept things. But uh, yeah, I just, I just want to hear your viewpoint so that we we're all on the same page. Okay, cool. So yes, I do believe. Um, and uh, I believe that he was resurrected, all that, all that stuff. And I, I take the position that it's not like some kind of alien thing or some kind of magical or scientific trick, but more that the God of the universe had a son named Jesus, and because of their connection and his ability, he resurrected. So cool. yes, I take cool. that position. Yep. Cool. Uh, yep. So yeah, cross examiner. Do you remember um, what what Dave had asked? I think yeah, it was, absolutely. Yeah, is please. is this an embellishment? How did if not that this is if it is not true that this is uh, an honest and truthful and accurate representation of what actually happened? How did we get here? How did we get this book that says this? Um, I'll start with, uh, sort of a note. One of the, one of the episodes I'm going to be doing with my podcast asks this question. Could I introduce the Bible as evidence at trial for the, for the, as evidence of the truthfulness of the claims that the Bible makes? And the answer is no. And the reason is, is a lot, but the big one is hearsay. We don't know who wrote it. We don't know anything about it. Um, and it's stories from story, you know, copies of translations of copies from oral tradition, et cetera. So I start from that reality. I don't think there's a, a any serious Christian scholar. Like when I say Christian scholar, I mean Christians who are scholars. I don't I don't believe there's any serious Christian scholar that would dispute that. We don't know who wrote the Gospels. We don't know um, what their relationship was to anybody who may have claimed to have witnessed those events. So I start from there. And then I ask myself, what's more likely? Uh, it, that this is all true, and it happened in the numbers that some of the Gospels say, where you know, hundreds, if not a thousand people saw it, and there were zombies in the streets and all that, and only four people decided to write it down at least 40 years after the fact. Nobody ran, ran and wrote all of this down like it would be the biggest news ever or over time we've got a lore that has built up much like king arthur or robin hood or um mm -hmm. any any current figure look at north korea right <laughs> the dear leader made 18 holes in one the first time he played golf that is a fact that's distributed around and so uh in north korea that is accepted as true because now that was more there's more malice there. They're trying to paint this picture, but we see in modern times, just look at uh, Joseph Smith and the Mormons. We've seen this time and time again. And I think it was, um, I forget who mentioned it on an earlier episode of the atheist experience who said, it's like a fish story. When I first tell the story, I caught a fish that was like this and then it got away. And then the fish just keeps getting, getting bigger each time I tell it. If I add into that, that I told somebody who told somebody who told somebody who then wrote it down and then it was mistranslated, et cetera. I can't, I can't come back to a, a, any sense of, yeah, this is reliable. Um, if you add on to the fact that it's, it's reporting on things that are miraculous, now all of a sudden I need much more than just these rumors and whispers that were written down uh, you know, a generation or more after, after the time they happen. So I don't think there's malice involved. I think it is one part... Um, trying to keep the story alive, one part fan fiction, one part uh, trying to accumulate power. I mean, I think there's an element of that. It's, hey, if you look at the progression of the Gospels from the first one to the fourth one, it is a lesson on how to increase the dramatic uh, effect and to cover for holes in the earlier ones. So if you look at all of that, I think it's a combination of all those things. Uh, do I think it's it's there's a conspiracy or anything like that? No, I just don't think it's a reliable historical document with respect to the to the a resurrection because there is no evidence. We don't have eyewitnesses. We don't even know who wrote these documents down. Uh, so I would not be able to introduce this into court on, on the lowest level of threshold of trying to introduce evidence, and that that speaks a lot to me. Yeah, and the only the okay. only thing I'd add on that, Dave, before I, I give the give the mic back to you, is just that 
when it comes to historical understandings, right, of the world around us, right, and where where we've come from and how it was, one of the things that we do is we kind of separate between these very mundane claims and these very extraordinary claims. And we do this for good reason, right? It's not to say that we just categorically rule things out that are extraordinary. There are extraordinary things that have happened in the past. Um, but the likelihood, right, the probability that something that we have absolutely no documentation of ever occurring now in our time when we have the best ability to record, document, and repeat extraordinary events, right? The absence of having that information now makes it more reasonable that in the past that stuff wasn't going on as well, right? Like when we drop a bowling ball today, every single freaking time we do it, it falls and hits our toe. I'm going to go ahead and say probably in the past when we didn't have bowling balls or bowling alleys or bowling pins, if somebody held a rock that was heavy and they dropped it, it's probably going to hit their toe, right? Like, so, so yeah, there's, there's those extraordinary things that, that we just don't have any good reason to believe are happening around us currently. Right. So why would we have reason to believe that they happened 10,000 years ago when just like cross examiner was saying, we, we really don't even have, you know, claims from people who say they were there. We, we just don't. We don't have eyewitness and we need at least that level. Right. Uh, so I know we shouted a lot at you, Dave. We want to want to give you some time to to talk back to us. So what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, two big things. Um, one and I got to uh, let's see which one do I want to go with first. So I think one of the big things that there's two kind of different Christian scholars, there's the higher criticism and then the ones that kind of stick to more, let's give this a chance. Um, and so I think that with kind of the ones who go from the approach of basically assuming, let's assume this is not a miraculous thing that could take place. Um, therefore we're going to date things based on that. And so it's very important to make sure, like in my mind, that kind of the, the dating system, you have two options. You have the option of this unique miraculous event did take place. What are likely dates there? And then, well, miraculous is unlikely to happen because of, you know, humans arguing what you just basically said. We're not going to give it kind of the leeway. Therefore, what are the dates in that case? And then, you know, so th there's that. And then the other thing is exactly what you said about kind of like Hume's argument. And I guess it's a unique argument. It's really thought out. I think it's probably the most devastating thing to ever um, affect Christianity. Um, and I think it's pretty cool that he came up with it. But I think that if you were to assume that there is a God, then something like this God coming to earth thing would happen once. Okay. In, so, so let's stop right there, well, Dave. Mm -hmm. Um, cause I, yeah. I kind of, I kind of, and this may shock some of our viewers and listeners, uh, with that last thing yeah. you just said, I kind of actually freaking agree, man. But the problem is that's what we're trying to figure out, right? Like right. Cross Examiner right. and I are up here saying, hey, man, one thing that kind of points us in the direction of this stuff not being accurate, right, is, you know, we yep. really don't mm -hmm. have any good demonstration of these particular things, like people rising from the dead, right? There are sometimes people who are in, like, comas. We think they're dead, and, like, their heart stopped, and their lungs aren't working, right. and we think they're dead, but they're not actually dead, right? But, like, nobody's right. really past right. that threshold of, like, brain death, just decomposing in the ground for a bit to coming back. So we don't have any good uh, right. evidence or examples of that. But another big thing, I think, uh, for both of us, me definitely, is this, like, underpinning of all these things all these really cool claims that we don't have good you know demonstration of currently the underpinning of all of that is that hey actually there's this other thing 
that exists that has all these fantastic powers and they can do all kinds of things. Um, and if you just agree to that from the beginning, then like all of this other stuff makes sense because I don't think we have any good reason to agree to that from the beginning, right? I mean, happy to do, and I love to do this. You know, I love to do in, uh, internal critiques. I love to say, okay, cool. You know, just like J. Mike always says, I'll give you all the toys to play with. Let's assume your God is real. Let's let's right. go down that route. But right. if really what yeah. we're doing is we're having the conversation of trying to say, like, do we have good reason to accept this thing? Do we have good reason to say, all right, let's check the box that says, God existing is more likely than not, right? Because again, like yeah. from there, I totally understand. Like I, I, I'm so with you. The idea of parting the Red Sea, the idea of, you know, mountains jumping into oceans, like loaves and fishes, like, come on, brother, I'm totally with you there. You know, absolutely. If yeah. God's real, he can do all that crap, you know? But absolutely, yeah. if really yeah. what we're talking about that, is the foundation for all of this is like, Hey, do we have good reason to believe that God is real with all these attributes? Then we can't just go. Yeah. But if you accept that that's the case, then all this other stuff makes sense because really what we're doing there is we're just yeah. avoiding that conversation. Right. Well, I think the reason why I'm bringing it up is just simply because with that assumption made, then dating and all the kind of the arguments that cross, you call yourself cross-examiner, um, it, it could change some of those arguments, those presuppositions wow. because yes. of that. Yes, because yeah. of the dating system. So, But I understand what you're saying. It's, what so ex explain that explain that yeah. a bit more dave i'm not sure i'm following you on yeah on are you that saying that logic. there's a there's question amongst the scholarly community as to when the gospels were actually authored and and if god actually does yeah, exist absolutely. that that would yeah. change the dates of no, when i think i think he's saying that there's two dating mm -hmm. systems that scholars use oh. and scholars who use yeah. one dating system yeah. will date them earlier than others Oh, I'm not an expert on that, but right. I'm just I'm just curious as to 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 what he, he, more, he, learning he, more about that okay. because my understanding I'll, I'll, I'll sorry just one second my understanding is the one of the methods yep. of dating is there are historical events that are documented in in the books and we know when those events happened because lots of people wrote about those mm -hmm. and then we see them mentioned in a particular book and uh, we know that's when the the, the book must have been written after that. Did I lose my internet? No, no, you're still going. Okay. Yeah, okay, yeah. You're doing great. The camera they, froze. So that's my understanding on. of the basic method of, oh, this mentions this war. We know the war took place on date X. So this must have been written on or after that time. So that's the main, one of the main ways yeah. of dating them. I'm unaware of any other methods they but use. There's, well, there's also the parameter of the upper end. So what, what is, any the, thoughts? you know, we gave, it must be, it must be after this time but there's also kind of parameters that help with what's you know what is it before um and so that's kind of the parameter that i'm kind of asking like or looking at life? which yeah i think oh. i think we often though we often when we have these datings especially for for these ancient texts like they're not they're not like a hundred percent exact in the sense of saying like this was done on June 12th of, you know, this particular year or, or whatever. Right. Like it's normally, if I remember correctly, like Mark is what, like, is it 60 to 80, you know? And like the, the writings of Paul are, are like 40 to 55 or something like somewhere along that, you know, like, like it's, it's normally we, there's, there's a decent range, you know, but not one that's so broad that it's like, well, this was written somewhere between zero and 250, you know, like, so I, I kind of feel like we do account for that. Um, yeah, I, I just I'm not I'm not sure how how the dating method is is super duper altered yeah. by people's beliefs unless they're just being like biased well, from the beginning. You. And yeah, yeah, please explain. I don't I'll wanna... give you I'll give you a specific example. Um, for example, um, there's this prophecy that supposedly Jesus made the Olivet Discourse saying that 
the temple would be destroyed, X, Mm -hmm. Y, Z. Um, And in Hebrews, for example, it doesn't say the temple was destroyed. I know it's an argument from omission, but something big like that in a book called Hebrews about the sacrifices, all that, you would think that it would say, oh, man, this just Uh, happened 10 years ago. Dave, I don't know that you want to say that, though, man. (laughs) I mean, I'm I'm kind of with you again, like I'm I'm kind of on on your side here with with that argument. But I, I just I think that cuts a lot harder and deeper on your side than it does ours, man. Like, I think if we take that kind of you know, uh, colloquial kind of logic, kind of, kind of general mundane logic. Like I'm kind of with you, man. And, and again, like, let's put it into the modern times, like something massively, insanely ridiculous happens. Like, I don't know, say somebody who, you know, owns some massive car company decides to just shoot a car randomly past Saturn, you know, like something like that. I was just pulling something mm-hmm. completely mm-hmm. out of my ass here. No relation to, to any, anything, uh, in real life. But, uh, like, I would assume that, yeah, people would probably talk about that shit on Twitter, man. Uh, you know, like, yeah, probably, right? Uh, though yeah. them not saying stuff doesn't necessarily mean that it didn't happen. Uh, but again, if we right. use that kind of understanding, I just feel like it, the Bible's on a lot shakier ground, man. All of the miracles in the Bible really only have like, one attestation and and one of the reasons i say that is because it's it's pretty obvious that they're building on mark explicitly like they literally it's word for word there are entire passages that are word for word copy from the oldest you know a book of mark that we have so like it just it it feels to me like if we take that argument and you go, hey, man, in this other part of the Bible, if they really wrote this after the fall of the temple, it's kind of confusing. They didn't mention it more. Um, yeah, I'm with you. But then what's your answer to the the zombies rising when when Jesus was crucified or the veil being torn or Jesus being crucified and, and rising from the dead? Do, do you see where I'm coming from here, right. Dave? Oh, I def I definitely do, and I think with like the zombies things, I don't know. Is that in Luke? I'd have to. <laughs> yeah, I think it's. I, I think it's in Luke. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I I was being a yeah. little crass with that too. I understand. You know, not not trying to poison the well or anything, but like it it does say people oh. rose from the dead, and that's pretty much a zombie, right? Right, <laughs> like... right, right. But they their appearance may not have looked like zombies. Um, sure, and yeah, also, sure, sure. in the case of not seeing them come out of the grave, if they weren't in the graveyard, they might have mistaken them for just regular people. And then later sure, on, be then, like, oh, again, my just you using I mean? just using the the simple colloquial, you know, follow through that that we we were talking about a minute ago. Like, wouldn't you at least think somebody would have written and been like, "Hey, man, Bill's <laughs> back." You know, haven't seen that dude since he got smashed in the head by by a donkey you know, three weeks ago and like <laughs> died, man. Wasn't that terrible? Remember how we buried him and it was so sad. But then we had that awesome festival celebrating his life afterwards. Like we we actually do have, you know, letters from people thousands and thousands of years ago. One of my favorite examples uh, that I got from a, a wonderful, wonderful scholar, Dr. Joshua Bowen, uh, has some fantastic uh, uh, books out there, Atheist Handbook to the Old Testament, one of my favorites. Um, But he brings up this example of literally uh, a a wife who is writing a letter to her husband that is a is a trader and a merchant. And she's like chastising him. It's just literal mundane, everyday (laughs) stuff like, you know, like today, like somebody would say to their partner and be like, hey, man, you didn't get the milk. You know, we were out of milk. You know, like also, uh, you know, did you call so and so to change our insurance or whatever? Like, that's what this letter is. It's literally just the the wife saying, like, husband, like you kind of screwed us over. You didn't give us enough stuff like to 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 <laughs> yeah. eat and to sell while you're gone. Like, get your ass back home so that we can, you know, you and your uh, us and our kids can survive. You know, so like, how do we have that? Yeah. And we, like dozens of stuff like that. But then we've re- we've only got we've only got like these four books. 
We've only got just this and they all directly copy from each other. It just feels like this puts this puts it more on shakier grounds. It puts your side just just less secure. Um, well, a couple things. Um, dating, you know, every hundred years you go back, less and less people wrote. So about 2000 years ago, less and less people wrote. Um, it also would have to have been preserved. Um, so those two things have to happen. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a big question, but the, the question of Christianity is a big question too. So to kind of explore it and kind of, you know, I'm doing the, give it the best, you know, what do they call it? Um, give it its best. Oh, I forgot the word, but basically I'm giving the Bible a chance while you are kind of, kind of saying, I'm not going to give it a chance. And that's cool. The two of us together, hopefully, will come closer and closer to truth, and I, I think that's kind of cool. Uh, well, I do like that but, goal, but I, I will just push back a little bit and say I, I think I think we have given the Bible a chance. I think really that's where our criticisms are coming from, is yeah. that we we really okay. have you know investigated. Right. I mean, I can't prove to you that I'm genuine. I, I can't prove to you that I have an open mind, really. But like, I, I really do feel like that's what I've done. Um, and and because of that, we've we've concluded otherwise. Uh, Cross examiner, is that is that kind of how you come to it, too? Absolutely. Absolutely. I I. I have read the Bible multiple times, front to back, um, uh, even through the begats and the and the crop harvesting and all of the boring parts. And um, I agree with you completely that we are giving it a chance. And I am I I take each claim on its own. So the, the Bible claims that there was the city and it was called X, and I can verify that with other sources. Okay, I'll accept that. Now it claims that this person existed. Okay, well, for argument's sake, let's say they existed. Then they say that magic happened, and now I say, okay, well, what's the evidence? And it's and it's stories upon stories that are are um, you know using most methods dated to have been authored in Rome between 700 and 110 uh, A.D. So um, that would not stand up for any other thing. You wouldn't rely on that for any other aspect of your life but you rely on it here or you want to rely on it. And I think the the note you said about, I want to give it a chance or I am giving it a chance and you are not, I think that's kind of telling. Um, I don't give claims a chance. I become convinced of the truth of a claim after I have been presented with insufficient evidence. That's There's no giving it a chance. Um, so uh, th I would say to sort of wrap things up, I get where you're coming from, that there are, you can twist yourself into a pretzel to say, well, maybe they would have mentioned this and this may be the dating method, but you have to do that so many different ways to even that to even be able to say these things were authored closer to the time, not even by eyewitnesses. They don't even say they're eyewitnesses. They say that they're reporting with other people. So we don't even have eyewitness testimony and any lawyer will tell you. Eyewitness testimony is the worst form of evidence that we have, and it's very, very susceptible to cross-examination and misinterpretation, all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. But just to get it, to move it closer to the events and to give it a little bit more um, standing, you have to twist yourself into all of these. Meanwhile, we have the bigger question going on. It would be akin to me saying, here's the video of the murder, here's the weapon, here's the confession and all this. Mm -hmm. And then the defense counsel's over in the corner saying, ah, but you don't know what he had for lunch that day. And don't you think you would have asked that question or he would have mentioned it because it, would, it took place in a restaurant? I'm like, maybe, but I think you're missing the point here. Like, we don't have, the, take a look at the big picture. And so I guess that's my summation would be, Take a look at the big picture and focus on those big things, because really the core of it is it's claiming that I need to believe this or I'm going to go burn in hell. And what what evidence do I have of that? I don't care about when the temple was destroyed so much. I only care about it when people start arguing about it. Yeah. And I think I think that's a, a great, a great way uh, to end this call, cross examiner. Um, and Dave, I, I know we've said so, a bunch of stuff that I'm sure you you have some so, uh, uh, just a litany of responses to. 
Um, and we do actually want to hear them again in the future, Dave. I, again, I, I thought this was a really good call, man. I, I thought we had a great conversation. Unfortunately, just we, we've got a time limit and eventually the crew wants to go home. Uh, so we're going <laughs> to let you go for, for today, man. But please do, please do give us a call back in the future.